Frequency response um, is, is a way of measuring what tones and sounds a sound system can reproduce. Um, mostly it's revolved around the, the way people hear. Uh, that makes pretty good sense. Human beings hear sounds in the range of 20 cycles up to 20,000 cycles. These cycles, um, if you've ever seen a thing called an oscilloscope, you would see these waves going up and down. But it's the vibrating frequency. So if you think of a guitar or a stringed instrument, the number of times it vibrates determines the pitch or tone of the sound that you actually hear. The human ear can hear a low tone of deep, deep E on a on a uh, organ, a pipe organ of 20 cycles. Well, if you heard that 20 cycles, or as is used many times internationally, Hertz, named after a physicist named Hertz, um, you would almost feel that sound as much as you would hear that sound. It's so deep. And similarly, the 20,000 cycles is the very highest frequency, almost inaudible, particularly to older guys like me, whose hearing often uh, deteriorates in the upper frequencies, uh, but it's the highest tone you can hear. So naturally, you look at a specification of a product and it says, well, of course we've got frequency response from 20 to 20,000 cycles. Some products may claim even wider frequency from you know, 10 hertz or 10 cycles to 100,000 cycles. Um, and, you know, there's the, the physicist joke of zero to the speed of light. Uh, in fact, all of these frequencies represent uh, some sort of vibration or radiation, and very, very, very high frequencies end up being the radio frequencies we use for cell phones or to send TV or other things. But what's really important is not necessarily the specification of how wide the range is or the mere fact that it covers human hearing, but how good is the job being done at the frequencies you actually hear? One of the problems with looking at that spec is everyone is going to do that. So you can see $1 headphones in a, in a Gaylord bin at a, at a discount store, and they'll say that they go from 20 to 20,000 cycles. But when you put them on and listen to them, you'll say, gee, why isn't the bass there like these better ones, uh, say something that Altec Lansing would make, why isn't it there? And that's because the way we say these specifications is not necessarily standard. So the deviation from the frequency is what's important. So generally when we look at a spec, it may say frequency response from 20 to 20,000 cycles. Some of those specs that are trying to be more upfront may say frequency response from 20 to 20,000 cycles plus or minus a thing called decibels. It may be plus or minus three decibels, plus or minus one, plus or minus ten. What's a decibel? A decibel is a measure of volume of sound. One decibel is the smallest sound difference that people can hear. So that's why we use it meaning anything less than a decibel you can't hear, but if we make a sound of one decibel, you can detect it. And so you can detect the difference between one decibel and two decibels. Decibels are not necessarily a straight line scale. It's what's called a logarithmic scale, something that you probably tried to avoid in, the, in high school, but essentially it's a curve that goes up like this real fast. And what that means is that a difference of three decibels is either twice as much or half as much. Oh, listen, so even if I say something can reproduce in the human hearing range of 20 to 20,000 cycles, plus or minus three decibels, that may mean that the bass tone I really like, if it's down three decibels, it's only half as loud as all the rest of the sound of music, and therefore it might be hard for me to hear. So you really want to look at what that spec is, because when we get into things that are plus or minus 10 decibels, well, let's see. Three decibels could be half. Six would be half again, or four, one-fourth the amount of sound. Nine could be half again, or one-eighth the amount of sound. So suddenly, if you're playing a tone at a nice listenable level, but the bass frequency or the high frequency you want to hear is only one-eighth as loud, 
as everything else, you, you're not going to hear it. How do we deal with this? Well, actually, we have a really simple way. Listen to it. You can't really buy an audio product based on the specifications. They're there to inform you. But the best thing you can do is get a piece of music or soundtrack of a movie that you're familiar with and you like. Play it on the sound system. Your ears are going to tell you if the tones that you think are important, whether they're bass or treble frequencies, are coming out right, what the quality of the sound is. Often the frequency response is not a straight line, it's up and down around, and that gives the character of the sound system. That character of the sound system is what you're going to live with. So frankly, if you listen to a lot of rock and roll, you may very much want a sound character of your system that's different if you're spending your time listening to opera or spoken word. That's why selecting a piece of music that you like or sound that you like and actually listening to the system is important. And that term, the system, is one of the most important things we'll discuss.